its name is mighty sweet and soon we're gonna make keep your eyes on the prize I hold on I got my hand on the gospel plow won't take nothing for my journey now keep your Thaddeus Stevens emerged as a prominent leader of the Radical Republicans during Reconstruction. His actions played a major role in establishing equal rights for African Americans on a federal level through the passage of the 14th Amendment. Stevens' legislation laid a foundation for future equal rights movements. Advances in equal rights will always serve as a legacy to Thaddeus Stevens. In 1865, the Civil War had just ended and the war-torn nation was to begin rebuilding. The Congress, as well as the nation, was deeply and fundamentally divided. Southern Democrats, conservative by today's standards, supported secession and slavery. Republicans, liberal by today's standards, supported emancipation. Congress had a Republican majority with a handful of radical Republicans who supported more extreme and drastic Reconstruction measures, such as the punishment of the South. There was a Democratic minority controlled by Southern Democrats. Thaddeus Stevens of Danville, Vermont was born to a single mother in poverty with many illnesses. Because Stevens understood poverty, it was his political goal to protect those less fortunate than him. He became an advocate for emancipation. He penned a draft of the 13th Amendment which would emancipate slaves throughout the Union. After revision, it passed in Congress and was signed into law resulting in the emancipation of African-American slaves. Thaddeus Stevens led the Radical Republicans in the fight to give African-Americans citizenship and equal rights through aggressive actions and legislation. Thaddeus Stevens was one of few in Congress who supported an extreme liberal reconstruction plan. Stevens believed that the whole fabric of Southern society must be changed, and he sought to do this in his reconstruction plan. In this plan, he wanted to disband the present state governments in the southern states and govern them as conquered provinces, make the proud, bloated, defiant rebels pay a sufficient fund levied out of the southern people to pay the expenses and damages of the war, give African American rights, and grant suffrage to African Americans who fought in the Union Army. Stevens also proposed confiscating land from former slave owners and giving each African American male 40 acres. Historian Robert Cruden describes that with this land, Stevens believed the long-term economic and political independence of the Negro would be protected. Stevens was adamant about granting land to emancipated African Americans, saying that if we do not furnish them with homesteads and hedge them around with protective laws, we had better have left them in bondage. Stevens planned to harshly punish the South and give African Americans full rights with land was considered too drastic for most of Congress. Abraham Lincoln, the first president to preside over Reconstruction, favored a moderate Reconstruction plan that would readmit former Confederate states back into the Union as quickly as possible in order to reunify the Union as painlessly as possible. This platform was rooted in his promise during his second inaugural address of Malice Towards None, Lincoln had a 10% plan, which required that only 10% of a seceded state's voters swear allegiance to the Union and vow to abide by the amended Constitution for readmittance. Stevens opposed this plan on the grounds that it was too moderate and generous to the South and that it would allow the Old South of racism and discrimination to re-emerge. Lincoln's plan was cut short by his assassination, leaving Andrew Johnson, Lincoln's vice president, a man described by historian Fawn M. Brody as a southern radical democrat who was genuinely grieved at the plight of the white working man, but indifferent to slavery. Johnson was also stubborn and infuriated members of Congress by rejecting their bills on the premise that they were too harsh on the South. Eventually, this created a division between Johnson and Congress. The moderates, who initially supported Lincoln, slowly distanced themselves from Johnson. Stevens took action and persuaded Congress to gravitate towards the radicals. In the election of 1866, the Republicans won many seats, creating a filibuster-proof, two-thirds majority, effectively ending the era of presidential reconstruction and Johnson's vetoes. 
With the support of a Congress that could override Johnson's vetoes, Thaddeus Stevens and the Radical Republicans aggressively took action and began work on the Reconstruction Acts of 1867. Historian Foster Rhea Dulles describes, With the decline of Johnson, Stevens was to exercise a measure of control over Congress that for a time made him the most powerful man in the political life of the nation. This is when, as historian William Richter describes, Stevens began his assault on the South. Thaddeus Stevens played a major role in passing the Reconstruction Acts of 1867. Under these acts, the South was divided into five military districts. Each of these districts was subject to military control. The Union troops had the objective of protecting the rights and interests of African Americans. Stevens' actions led to the ratification of the 14th Amendment on July 9, 1868, which ensured that African Americans were recognized as citizens of the United States. Because of these provisions, African Americans experienced a cultural awakening in which they assumed prominent roles in Southern society. Towards the end of Radical Reconstruction, Thaddeus Stevens died. After his death, Charles Sumner, another leader of the Radical Republicans, took a more prominent role. The 15th Amendment, which gave African American males suffrage, was also passed. Although this was not a priority in Stevens' lifetime, his amendments made its passage possible. This also made the election of African Americans to government positions in the South possible. The death of Stevens marked a gradual shift in power back to the Southern Democrats. As a result, the election of 1876 was very close and hotly contested. Rutherford B. Hayes, a Republican, and Samuel Tilden, a Democrat, both claimed victory. In Florida, Louisiana, and South Carolina, both candidates claimed to have the majority of votes. A compromise was reached dictating that Hayes, a Republican, would be issued a certificate of election if he, among other things, put a Democrat in his cabinet and removed troops from the southern states, ending Reconstruction. The South's political framework relapsed into racism, reinforced by the lack of protection of African Americans and the re-election of racist Southern Democrats. The actions of Thaddeus Stevens as a leader of the Radical Republicans gave African Americans equality on a federal level. Because of the actions taken by Thaddeus Stevens and the bills and amendments that he played a major role in passing, African Americans were now recognized as free citizens of the United States. Later, legislation based on his amendments would allow the passage of the 15th Amendment, giving African Americans suffrage. After the 15th Amendment passed, the first African American senators and congressmen were elected as a result of Stevens' action. In 1868, Republican John Wilkes Menard of Louisiana was elected as the first African American congressman. Within the next six years, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, and Florida would also elect African American representatives. In the election of 1870, the first African American senator, Republican Hiram Revels of Mississippi, was elected. The election of these legislators would not have been possible without Stevens' actions during Radical Reconstruction. The legislation that Thaddeus Stevens played a major role in passing gave equal rights to African Americans on a federal level. The 13th Amendment freed African Americans from slavery. The 14th Amendment ensured that African Americans were treated as citizens of the United States. These amendments set the stage for the 15th Amendment, which gave African American males suffrage. The legislation and amendments passed during Radical Reconstruction were later referenced in the modern-day civil rights movement and continue to serve as Stevens' legacy. The first African-American congressman, John Willis Menard, was elected in 1868, less than one year after Stevens' death. The first African-American senator, Hiram Revels, was elected in 1870, two years after his death. The first African-American president, Barack Obama, was elected in 2008, 140 years after his death. The election of these legislators, as well as other civil rights advances, illustrate the continuing legacy and impact of Thaddeus Stevens. The life work of Thaddeus Stevens can best be summed up by his epitaph, Equality of Man Before His Creator. Triumphantly, won't you help to sing these songs of freedom? Cause all I ever had 
redemption songs redemption songs